Hey, what's up everybody and welcome back to the homestead. My name is Liz and in today's video, I'm going to be building a couple of different kind of trellises for my peas as well as my green beans. I'm going to start with the peas. I've got a couple different kinds here, some snow peas as well as some snap peas. And you can see these guys wanted to climb quite a while ago. So we're gonna get them all untangled. We're gonna get them climbing and they're gonna be a whole lot happier. For my trellises, I'm going to be using leftover materials or materials that I have lying around my property. And the research that I've done with building trellises for plants that like to climb, there's so many different ways you could do it, whether that be store-bought or homemade, um, whatever it is, they just like to climb. But for me, since I'm making this out of materials I already have, I need to go get those collected. Okay, I'm getting close to being finished with this first one here. This is by no means a how-to or tutorial because this is my first time building something like this. So I'm kind of slightly winging it. I like it, I like the look of it. It could be a little more sturdy going that way. It's a little wobbly side to side. It looks good. I added the brace on the bottom of each side. These braces up here, uh, some people might call them like corbels. That added some strength as well. I think it's good for what it is. Kind of considering adding another board across the middle. That might tighten it up just a little bit. But they're tall and kind of skinny. So I don't know if I'd 100% be able to eliminate all of that. But as long as it's not swaying side to side, I'm happy about that. I got my pea trellises all finished. I had read that peas can grow on average, certain kinds of peas can grow on average between six to eight feet. So I actually went with seven feet on the taller one and about like six, six and a half feet on the shorter one. Thought it would just look nice to kind of like stagger it, step it up a little bit. I'd rather go too tall than too short, but I think that it looks good. I think the chicken wire makes it look nice and tidy. Um, these guys will eventually grow nice and tall and strong. I don't really know what I was thinking when I planted this row right here. It's kind of just off in no man's land. It's in the middle. Um, it should it should be off to either this side or this side because it can't really super well reach either side. That's my fault, not really knowing what I was doing before I had these trellises up. I actually just planted another little secession in these empty spots um, with some more peas. We still have time up here in our growing season, so that's kind of cool. I like the look of this. I think that it turned out great. It looked fast in the video, but this actually took me quite a while. It should work. I'm excited to see how it does. 
If you ever feel like you need the perfect tool for smaller projects around your house, then the S1 Pro Cordless Screwdriver by Fantic is going to be the perfect tool for you. The S1 Pro by Fantic is a professional kit that offers some of the best steel bits for a variety of projects, both indoor and out. The tool comes equipped with 16 different bits suitable for accurate precision and narrow spaces. The screwdriver is built with a dual rotation feature and supports three gear torque control along with a built-in LED light so you can work in dim spaces. The S1 Pro comes with a standard USB-C type charger so that you can have this on the go. You can keep it in your car, you can keep it in your house, but either way you can always keep it charged. The practical and efficient magnet bit storage box ensures that all of the pieces of this screwdriver stay in one place so you don't have to go looking when you need it the most. To see for yourself just how awesome this tool is, click the link in the description box below and use our code to get 29% off the S1 Pro screwdriver by Fantic. Thank you Fantic for sponsoring today's video. I'm going to be trying something a bit different with my beans. Um, rather than like kind of a more permanent wooden structure, I'm going to be using T-posts and string. So we'll see how it goes. So the beans, same boat as the peas. They were ready to go up a while ago. I've got four T-posts here. It's gonna go, we're gonna do a line like right down the middle of the four rows. So one T-post on each side and then a board across the top of each one with strings going down so that these beans will just climb right up the strings. Okay, here is the finished product for the green beans. I've got the boards on the top and the bottom. The string just kind of wraps around. You know, I tied the boards to the T-posts using that string. It's pretty sturdy. You can see I kind of helped them along start climbing up. I like it, I think it looks good. It was a lot quicker than building that one over there. And I still think that it looks good. All right, the string that I ended up using is like a jute cord and I fully anticipate that it's not going to make it until next spring. We have pretty harsh winters up here in North Idaho. So I imagine after like the wet and the freeze and the thaw, it's going to break. But for me, a garden is like an ever evolving process. And I don't even know for sure if I like love this, if it's going to work, um, if the beans are going to be in this bed next year, it's ever evolving. So I'm not going to be too bent out of shape if it doesn't hold up. I think that the pea trellis will hold up. Built that pretty sturdy. The only other string that I had was like this white plasticky uh, kind of string and that probably would hold up better, but I don't really like the look of it as much. I like the more like natural kind of look of the jute. So that's why I went with that and I had it left over. It's just a couple of bucks for like a spool of 200 feet of that. So I think it does look nice, but yeah, I'm fully anticipating that I might have to either redo it next spring or come up with something else. We'll just see, you know, how the beans like it. If it's tall enough, we will just have to see. It's an ever evolving process. Overall, those were a couple of really great projects. I'm very happy that I went with the two different methods, both the chicken wire as well as the string. I'm interested to see how the plants do on either one. I know that a lot of people have used both of these methods. I found all of that information online. You know, there's tons of ways to do it out there, but I hope that these ones work for me. 
you guys have made it this far in the video, I very much appreciate you watching. Um, maybe check back in August or so. Hopefully my trellises are completely full of plants. I appreciate you watching and we'll catch you in the next video.